With the impending closure of the 3G networks, close to three quarters of a million Australians may be unable to contact emergency services with their current handsets. Joining me to discuss this now is Tech Guide editor Stephen Fennick. Stephen, the federal government has set up a working group to ensure the switchover from 3G to 4G runs smoothly as possible, but there are still many risks in this transition. Talk us through it. Yeah, good morning. Uh, you're right, there, there is this hidden danger of uh, the, the, the switchover, the shutdown of 3G, I should say. Uh, Vodafone's already shut down their network. Telstra is going to shut theirs down in June, followed by Optus in September. Now, the, the issue uh, is that even though some customers may have a 4G handset, uh, an older 4G handset, the problem is that they would not be able to connect to triple zero or emergency services because of a, a lack of a feature called VOLTE, which is voice over LTE. Without 3G, that's what's required to, to hit uh, emergency services. Now, a, a lot of people are looking at their phones, they're seeing they're getting a 4G signal, but uh, uh, it, it may be too late if, if they, they realise that when they need to ring triple zero, they can't get through. So what, what the government and the telcos are trying to do now is to contact the, the, their customers and to, uh, to, to inform them whether their devices still would still work in this situation. Uh, I've got a list of them on my, on my website at Tech Guide. So the devices, we're talking like iPhone 5, uh, Galaxy S5s as well. So older phones, but phones that are as, as recently as 2019 could fall in this category where they're not going to work uh, if the, uh, when the 3G networks are closed down. So I think it's really important to to check, even even check in on parents, grandparents, make sure they're not going to be caught out that their devices are going to be still compatible once 3G is shut down. Yes, this is extremely important. Now, Apple is rumoured to be releasing new iPad Pro models. That's right. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, there's some solid rumours circulating right now that maybe even before the end of the month that there, there may be some uh, some new iPad Pros unveiled. Word is they're going to have new OLED screens, so really nice, higher quality displays, uh, as well as having a thinner chassis as well. Uh, one of the other changes uh, is the camera positioning. Uh, anyone who owns an iPad knows that once you hold it in the portrait mode, the camera is actually at the top on the short edge. What they're going to do now is probably reposition that camera on the on the landscape edge, on the on the longer edge, so that when you're making your FaceTime calls, it's easier to centre you in the screen. The other rumour is that they will also have MagSafe, which is a feature we already see on on the latest iPhones, which is a, a magnetic charging technology. So you'll be able to hold the iPad Pro in place and still charge it like you would an iPhone. But expecting to hear something in the next week or so with the new iPad Pros likely to go on sale in mid-April. Mid and before we let you go, Synology has unveiled a brand new addition to its product line. What can you reveal about this new device? Yeah, this is called the B Station. Now, we've heard of cloud storage and, and a lot of us pay for having our, our content up, up in the cloud. But the B Station is actually a, a personal cloud system. So it looks like a hard drive, but it's connected to your home network. You set it up really easily too. Just scan a QR code. It connects to your network. You can create accounts for people in your household. So you're able to treat this as your personal cloud. Each person can use it to back up their photos from their devices, from their smartphones. So using it in the very same way that you would a public cloud, let's say, but this is uh, in the in your own home and easy to connect whether you're on your network or remotely. So you can access files and documents, four terabytes of storage as well. So really easy to access that, creating your own personal backups for everyone in your home. So uh, if you, uh, you, you've you got to get that really important backup whenever you need it. Stephen Fenwick, thank you for the update. Thanks a lot.